Hey guys, welcome into Amanda's Favorites. Have you ever gone through a time when your planner just was not working for you? I think we can all relate to that. I went through it in January of this year. For like a whole month, I tried out so many different planners. I'm gonna share them all with you. I'm gonna show you my planning in them. I'm gonna tell you what I loved about each one, what maybe wasn't working for me about each one, and where I have landed for right now. Let's jump right into this story. This story starts right at the end of December 2023. We were leaving just like three days after Christmas to take my son to his first semester of college up at BYU. And so he had just been home from his mission, his two-year mission, for three months. So we'd gone through a lot of transitions in our lives. But I had still been in the same planners up until then. I was still using Mom Agenda as my weekly planner, and it had been working so well for me, just really serving me perfectly and feeling like just the right place to be for that time up until when we left. When we left, I knew I wasn't going to bring Mom Agenda with me, and I was just in a notebook for my daily list. Instead of a daily planner, I was in a Planner Perfect notebook. If you have followed me for any amount of time, you know usually I'm not in a daily planner. I am usually in a just a blank notebook for my daily list, and I let my weekly planner really guide everything. And so I am usually in a Planner Perfect, her monthly plan book, which I get the subscription box sent to me, but I love just the blank pages. I love decorating them. I don't have the one that I was using because I already packed it away in the closet, and I didn't think about pulling it out for this video, but you guys have seen me share here on my channel, on my Planner Perfect playlist and on Instagram. I use these monthly notebooks so many times for my daily list. It's a sewn, beautiful, seasonal notebook, and you can choose dot grid pages, um, or I think even graph grid is an option now in the subscription box, and you can decorate it up with her stickers and washi tape, and it just makes your days happy. So I was in this and the mom agenda. Sometimes for daily notebooks, I also switch into a Becky Higgins little notebook. She's actually not selling these on her site right now. She's taken a break from it. You can buy them from deseretbook.com though. So I will link that here down below. Also Planner Perfect notebooks. I just got these in, so I haven't used them for my daily list yet, but they would be the perfect size and be comparable to like the Becky Higgins to use for a daily list. And I do have a 20% off code for Planner Perfect one-time use, Amanda20. I'll link it down below if you're interested in any of this. And a Planner Perfect playlist if you're going like, Amanda, what is Planner Perfect? So that will all be linked down below. But that was what I was in when I left three days after Christmas 2023. Little did I know that taking just the Hobonichi cousin on my trip would bring me back feeling all kinds of confused about what planner I should be in. So this planner is an 18 month planner by Mom Agenda. And I actually grew to really like that because that means you start in July. And that means this took me, this will take me all the way through the end of 2024. So I didn't have to do a planner switch at that really hard time. You can see I still used it some when I got back when I was testing everything out. I was still in mom agenda kind of for my base because when I'm testing everything, I still have to have like some sort of base for my plans. So I was still in here and I do love to add my little decorations to the page, but I didn't have to make a planner switch because this was an 18 month planner and they'll come out with their new planners again in July, you know, and you can either decide to stay in this one or to switch to the new one, which is what I would do. And so that's mom agenda. I have a whole um, review video on this. But when I went on our trip, I took just this Hobonichi cousin, Han. That means it's the hardcover. It was a gift from my friend, Tara. And I was just planning on using it for journaling and memory keeping for the year. But when we were going on our trip, I thought, you know what? This would be just the most compact thing to take so that I could have our weekly plans in here, but I could also have room for daily lists during our trip, which we needed because we were getting him set up at college and what are we doing every single day? Here was back on our trip. And so I was like, this is the perfect thing to bring and not have to bring more than one book and yet to have everything in it. I have plenty of room for daily lists and notes on our trip in here. 
in the daily pages, and yet I can still see our week mapped out here on the weekly pages. And so I was like, okay, this is all I'm bringing on the trip. I brought it and it worked perfectly. I've been writing a memory in it every day. I decided since I don't need the monthly spreads in here because I always use my Ashley Shelley collab planner up on an acrylic easel on my desk because I like to see my monthly out, kind of like a wall calendar, but smaller. I like to see this in front of me so I don't ever utilize the monthlies in my planners for like, for planning all my events. I, util I utilize them for different things at different times. So this is always my monthly and always on my desk. And I just submitted all my colors and my cover and spoke to Ashley Shelley for 2025. So we are gonna have another collab in 2025, you guys. But when I came back from my trip, I need to make a long story short here. This put me into a planner crisis because then I was like, should I just try to use this? Although I knew, number one, the thin paper, although I can deal with it, for my daily lists every day, it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite because it makes me feel like I'm opening to kind of a messy page already and I'm already a messy planner. And so having all that show through on the Hobonichi paper is just really not conducive to my daily planning. I don't mind it for memory keeping, but daily planning, it, it gets to me. It makes my brain seem, see, the messy. It makes me feel like I can't think already about that day because I can see too much on the back of the day before. And I also know myself that I need to see my weekly on my desk, like right to the left of me. And I keep my daily notebook to the right of me. And then my monthly is up on an acrylic easel so that I can always see my monthly, my weekly, and then my daily. So I knew I probably wouldn't want it all in one book. But if I was someone who went out every single day, if I took my planner out with me to my job or I was on the go, I can see how having it all in one book would be so helpful and I really do love the Hobonichi Cousin for so many reasons. There's no way you can fit more in any other book. But I knew that this was not going to be my answer for all my planning this year when I had all these other amazing planners sitting on my shelves. So I have a big advantage because I review all these planners. I have all these amazing planners sitting on my shelf. So I thought, let's just start trying them. Let's just start trying them and see what feels right. So first I'm gonna show you what I tried for the weekly planners, and then we'll talk about the daily after that. So first I went back to my trusty Erin Condren. Erin Condren always makes me so happy because of the fonts and the colors and the paper and the colorful tabs. Like you, can, you cannot get a planner that makes me happier than Erin Condren. And I will tell you, every time I go out of Erin Condren, it's the planner that I end up back in after whatever period of months that I'm out of it. So I have no doubt that I will end up back in Erin Condren at some point, but I went back into it. I went in and out of it during this trial time and I just was missing some of the elements of the mom agenda where the bound book, I realized I'm really in a bound book stage. I really love to see my whole week laid out like this without a coil in the middle because I could lay this out on my desk. I do have room. Yes, it takes up more room than the mom agenda. The mom agenda is seven by nine, just like this, but adding the coil adds like a whole nother inch and a half in there. So it does take more room, but you can't just write on it really quick with the coil like this. You need to flip it one way or the other. And also I couldn't manipulate the page to make my weekly lists in different categories down below. And so I was like, although I always prefer Erin Condren for the monthly colors, the paper, the happy, the beautiful, it just was not the most efficient planner for me at this time. And so I was like, let's keep going. I have so many on the shelf. So I tried sprouted weekly, even though I know in my mind, I generally really like a vertical spread and I didn't want to coil. This is still one that I pulled out because I love so much about Sprouted Planner. And I also pulled out her hourly because it's a bound. And so like I said, I was coming to the realization that I needed a bound book. And I was also at the realization that it needed to be about seven by nine size. And I really liked vertical the best. And I needed somewhere for a weekly list. Well, this is kind of a different layout. You have the hourly. It's thinner columns because she puts her weekly list over to the right. 
and you could divide it into categories. And I did try this out for many different weeks way back when I first got it. And then I tried it out more during this trial period. I also love her monthly reflection questions. Here's a blank spread for you to look at. But ultimately this did not win out for me because I do keep a lot of list items and this was a pretty thin column for me to keep my list items every day. But it definitely was an option because of the spread. I also love her colorful monthly tabs and her book lays completely flat. If you have not checked out Sprouted Planner, I highly recommend it. I have my full review video, I'll link down below. I have a 15% off code. I believe it's your first time use only, Amanda's favorites, but 15% off and no affiliate link with that one yet. But she also has a horizontal weekly spread here with your whole week on this side. And then a lot of list room over here. I love all the list room over here. I definitely think that I could make this spread work if it was in a bound book. But like I said, I, it's not. And I learned that I'm really, I'm in a bound book phase right now. So before we move into all the bound books that I tried, I did try the Ashley Shelley with a coil because she made this new horizontal layout this year. It's 80 pound paper. She has a color every month. You guys know I love that. So I love the color on every page. I love the reminder of a monthly focus or a monthly word on every page. I could make some list categories down here. It's not exactly what I need. Saturday and Sunday are stacked, but it is your normal one and a half inch columns. And it is a really lightweight though, a little bit smaller than seven by nine book. And I do love all her monthly colors. They're different than my monthly colors and my monthly uh, collab with her, but I love the colors that she's picked. And so I was like, this brings in colors. I like her fonts. I like her 80 pound paper. But once again, it's the same thing. It's very small and portable. And I loved that, but it was just not exactly what I needed right now. I love her light lines. I love her monthly because even though I'm not using it for my planning, it's just like the collab. So whatever I use it for, I'm very familiar with it. The Hemlock and Oak is probably the bound book planner that I tried to make work the most. I want to use Hemlock and Oak. You know, there's those planners that we want to make work for us. And who knows, maybe in the future, because it is very, very close. And I, and I have played in Hemlock and Oak so much. So while we talk, I'm just gonna flip through some of the things I've tried. I've tried to white out none of the times and just make my line across the bottom for a list here. I've tried to use Tombow Whiteout, which at least the old Tombow Whiteout I have doesn't exactly match the white of the page. There might be a newer Tombow out that does, because honestly, the Tombow Whiteout that I've had, I've had for years. So I tried to white out the categories and then the times at the bottom for like my list down here, but I just don't love writing across the whiteout. I just don't love the way that made it look. I also like to write my numbers a little bit bigger and I love to bring in color to the page. I did like how it was timed, but I could write in stuff at the time it was happening or I could just make a list. But then I was cutting myself off at 7 p.m. by making my list down here. And so, you know, sometimes there was things after 7 p.m. Not a lot, you guys. Pretty much only with my teenage son because I try to stay, stay inside. I'm like an old person at night. I'd rather not go out. I did have a friend in my Patreon group because we've had intense discussions in our Zoom calls about this planner. So many of them are using this Hemlock and Oak right now. And she white outs all the way down the times through the whole week. And I think she has white out tape that matches um, better because this is a very off white. It must just be because mine's old because I've seen hers in the calls and didn't mention anything about that. But so there are, there's a lot of ways you can manipulate this page. The same with Mom Agenda. That's how I felt like. The Mom Agenda page was very able to be manipulated and that's why it worked for me because I could draw my lines wherever I wanted. And I liked the light page. I liked the blue. It feels very old school. It feels very, very kind of when I was in high school-ish and growing up with the fonts and everything. I love the rounded corners and I love the hard cover of the mom agenda and how you could manipulate all this and that the page was seven by nine. So this is a little bit smaller, but I want this to work because the hemlock paper is amazing. It's 80 pounds, you guys. It's smooth, but not slick. Everyone who tries it loves this paper. And everyone who has used the hemlock loves the hemlock and oak. You have a whole 
goal system, reflections, questions built in. I just put up a new 2024 review of all their planners. They also have a minimal planner besides this one, and they also have a daily planner. And I have an ongoing 10% off code, Amanda's Favorites. With Hemlock and Oak, you can use it over and over on every purchase, and I do have an affiliate link. They are also a company that is really trying hard for everything to be sustainably made and doing the right thing for the environment, and I love that too. It is a woman-owned company that has just done so much since the year they started just a couple years ago. It's a beautiful planner. It has that Hobonichi like day, uh, weekly layout, but if you don't need the daily pages and or you can't deal with the thin paper of the Hobonichi, then this might be the one for you with this very light grid and so many things you can do to the page. And it lays you guys flat better than probably any other bound book planner I've ever used. It is seamlessly laying perfectly flat without like working it in or anything like that. So I love the Hemlock and Oak. You can tell I want it to work for me. I've tried it out for so many weeks, but it just never caught for me yet. But who knows? In a couple of years, it might because I tried Mom Agenda out for all the like, I've reviewed it for four or five years. I've always tried it out, but it never just caught for me until this year. So I think it's just, you know, we need different things at different times. I was just drawing out March Daylight Savings Time, and on Monday Start Monthlies, I like to outline, my friend Jana taught me this, outline the weekend to highlight it. So if you're used to a Sunday start on your monthly layout, this will like cements it in your brain so you're not writing in dates on wrong places. So obviously, I have played in this, used this a lot. Every page is numbered. I absolutely love Hemlock and Oak and cannot say enough good about it. So if I was in my bound book phase, I thought I need to try out this curation planner, which I already have a review booked for the fall this year for their 2025 planners. But so far I've only shared it on Instagram in a reel. But this curation planner really caught my eye because it's not the layout I need. But there were a couple things that caught my eye about it anyway and made me try it out for several weeks. I could, I could see this one working for me at some point. It is a horizontal layout though. So let me go to a blank page for you. You can get their tabs, which come on here and match your cover perfectly. I've only put them on through May, but you have a horizontal layout. It lays flat when you just massage it a little bit. You don't have that seamlessly laying flat, but it does, it does pretty well like all other book bound planners. It just doesn't have that insanely exceptional. <laughs> thing that Hemlock and Oak does. And their paper is good. I cannot remember the paper weight since I have not done a review on them yet. Oh, here it is. It's 100 GSM, 68 pounds. So it is not that 80 pound paper, but it is the A5 size and you have room for appointments, your tasks for the day, an exercise, and you have a habit tracker for the week and notes. It's a very nice weekly layout. But before each week, you have this kind of like mapping out your week layout. This is a really interesting thing. And a drawing board where you can make any kind of list. Gratitude reflection. They have highlighted the week you're on. Your priorities for the week. I really like this kind of mapping out your week page and thinking about it. And the weeks I use this, I definitely utilized that and played around with this. And I really liked that. Although it made me have to flip back to the page before for my weekly list. And I really like having my weekly list on the page I'm on. And I really do prefer a vertical layout, but I've used horizontal layouts before and at different times they've worked for me. This is this is definitely a really interesting planner I like a lot and I'm glad that I'm gonna be able to do a full review for you guys this fall and share their new 2025 with you. So that's the curation planner. Definitely pulled it off my shelves many times. It's just A5 bound books. They feel so good in hand. They're so portable. So if we're going only into bound books and we like A5 bound books, or me, I'm talking about me, then I had to try out Commit 30 because I used Commit 30 all last year off and on for my health and wellness tracking. I really like a lot about Commit 30. It only has 70 pound paper, but it lays flat. It's like this basic planner that just can work for you. So I, I tried out some weeks in here, but what it comes down to me is I really don't love looking at the khaki all year. Yes, it's a basic color, but I'd almost prefer the page to not have the khaki if it wasn't gonna have any color to be able to add my own color in. But like I said, I used it all year for my health and wellness. So I really could deal with that 
And this is still like a contender, you know, at different points, I think about it because I could see making this work for me. Lists could go down here, just not as much room as I would like to manipulate them. You know, I'd rather it be kind of like all blank from about here down, but there's list room here and the portability of it, I do like. So I like a lot about Commit 30. I do not have a discount code or affiliate link for them, but I really do like Commit 30. That led me to Passion Planner. You guys know I have used Passion Planner a lot in the past. I love Passion Planner. There's some things I don't like about it, but in general, these stickers were just, now your, your Passion Planner comes with some really cool stickers. And A5, they don't fit in the pocket, I guess. And the bigger one, they do. But I was thinking about using the A5 because I would love to stay in a book this small. And I, I might, who knows, move into the A5. I tried it out a little bit without marking it up a lot. But I landed in the medium-sized Passion Planner which is 10 inches by seven inches. So it's a little bit bigger than a seven by nine. I'd rather it be like a seven by nine because I don't need quite those extra inches, but that's okay. Passion Planner, I was able to snag, like this is my favorite Passion Planner cover I've ever had in all the years that I've gotten Passion Planners. I just bought one for the year knowing that it's a planner that I sometimes like to have on hand to use on busy weeks. I almost always try to have a passion planner every year that I could jump in and out of. So I got this when these covers first came out for the calendar year because I was like, I love that cover. And I'm so glad because this cover sold out really fast. But be on the lookout because they're going to come out with new covers for academic year. That's a fun thing about passion planner. They come out with new covers for academic year and then new covers for calendar year too. So that is, I do love that. And I love, look at that, the spine. Grow at your own pace and the 2024. So Passion Planner always has one ribbon bookmark and it is always the Kickstarter color because that's how they got started. It barely goes to the edge, but it does. You always have a expandable, really good pocket in the back. Now they come with several sheets of stickers. You always have a band. So if you need a portable planner, these are Passion Planner holographic tabs. They go on wonderfully. And if you were more of a perfectionist than me, you would have stuck them on exactly straight. I messed up a little bit in the beginning <laughs> and I accidentally messed up January. So I put a blank one there instead. You can tell I'm not a perfectionist. Okay, so besides the fact of loving the cover, cover sell planners, but we rarely see the covers when they're open on our desk, right? I did do the passion roadmap in the beginning. I'm not gonna show it to you extensively because it's private, but I will just flip through it really quick. I did the passion roadmap. I think it is a fun exercise. It's their little goal planning system in here. I will pop up my latest passion planner review. And if it's not the size comparison one, I'll pop that one up too, because they have a large, medium, and small. The A5 is their small, this is their medium. They have a larger one. So going into here, I'm very familiar with Passion Planner. I landed in here and I have been utilizing it. I've even been doing some of the monthly reflection. I've used the monthly layout for some like habit tracking on what did I want my main habit to be this month and working on that on there. And then you go into the weekly pages and I was kind of figuring out my groove in here. I actually used Passion Planner way back when I first started my channel. It was one of the first planners I ever reviewed on my channel. Although I don't think that review is still up on my Passion Planner playlist because the first like several reviews I did on my channel, I accidentally shared where at the beginning of planners, I would write in my phone number. I was still in the mentality that this is my planner and if I lose it, I want you to call me. And I would put my phone number in here and then I would accidentally show it in videos. And there was no way to edit on YouTube at that time. Now there is, at least if there was at that time, I didn't know enough about it to go in and edit a video when it's already up on YouTube. So anyway, to edit something out, I had to take down like the first few reviews that I did. I like to mark off things with a dark color, but not necessarily, it doesn't have to be black. So like if I pick a different color every week, it can kind of go with my color theme. And here's what we're looking at. I like a few stickers and adding color to the page because I would say the one thing I don't like about Passion Planner is, here's the week we're on, I don't like the overall gray scale, you know? I love their big monthly boxes, but the overall gray scale, I mean, you guys know I would love this if there was like a monthly color and it was like printed in color. 
And also, I would probably love it if this section was just dot grid or blank too. Um, because sometimes I don't want to write as small as the little lines. And sometimes I just want to do something different. I don't want to be guided by the lines. Lots of people think those are check mark boxes. If you watch the Passion Planner videos, you actually find out from them. Those are actually supposed to be where you write the amount of time a task will take, your estimation. So you can kind of, you know, estimate that. You get a quote every week. I don't know, sometimes they're motivational. Sometimes I wish that space was just blank so I could stick a sticker there or you know something else colorful that motivates me. So I have gone ahead and decorated ahead. If I don't use it, it's okay. I had fun one night and I like to do it ahead because I don't know, I'm a planner. It makes me happy, you guys. <laughs> so I have stuck some washi that does kind of help with the black. It does kind of take away some of the end of your day and go into the quote also. I like to highlight like the date up there, a different color every month. And so I've gone ahead, like I said, and put some things in here. But we'll see if I'm if I'm still in here. But right now it's feeling very comfortable to me. Some weeks it feels like more room than I need, but I'd rather have more room than I need than not enough room. And the lines in the A5 are just so much tinier down here. You actually, you don't have less lines, they're just tinier. And same with these lines, tinier. And so I wish that it was just the blank space. So I wasn't squished into those lines. But then these lines are also smaller. And so that's where the problem of using the A5 of this comes in with me. But the paper is 80 pound and amazing. You can't, you can't do better than that. And I'm figuring out my groove in it, like highlighting the top priority of personal and work. So I am utilizing it in the way that they made their list there extra list over here and just a few stickers and washi tape here and there to add some color. Sometimes I'm putting the temperatures in here, sometimes not. But so far I feel really good about it and I love turning to March and seeing this month and looking at our, I drew a sun, I'm not artistic, but sometimes I just want to draw something in there and anyone can draw a sun because I love adding the color to the Passion Planner pages. If you're someone artistic, I think adding just so much color to the page, it just, it makes it beautiful. There's something about a Passion Planner. It also lays perfectly flat. It screams for you to write in it and draw in it all over it. And those are some Laurel Denise Easter stickers, those, and Washi Tape Shop and Planner Perfect. So this is what we are in right now, you guys. And this is hopefully where I'm going to be. Now, is Erin Condren going to tempt me when they come out with their new planners, which st will start in July? They won't start till July. I'm sure, yes, the new planners are gonna tempt me and I might move into them in July. But I wish Erin Condren would do a layout like this. I wish they would team up with me in a soft bound planner. Uh, anyone who wants to do a collab with me because I have my definite ideas of how I want this vertical layout and my list room at the bottom to be and everything about it. But right now, I'm happy in here and the end. I do have a $5 off your first Passion Planner purchase. I can't remember how much you have to spend to use that. It might be $50. I can't remember, but it will tell you if you click on the link down below that says $5 off, then you sign up with your email and you will get your $5 off code if it is your first Passion Planner purchase. I do not have an affiliate link, but I do just have that $5 off. And then their tabs always come with extra blank ones, which is nice because you can label your note space back here. And they also have a lot of notes, you guys. They have a lot of blank pages and then dot grid. So it's kind of divided up half blank, half dot grid. I'm sure they have the number listed on their website, but it's a good chunk, like at least 20 pages of that nice thick paper. Your nice big pocket, I already took the sticker sheets out of here, and then your band. I always recommend when people say what's the best planner for a high school or a college student. I mean, for me, I always say start with Passion Planner, hands down, because they can pick from one of three sizes that works for them. They can literally just use one pin, like the Uniball Jetstream. I don't have one here where I can grab. You know, the three color clicker that comes with your Hobonichi orders, but you can also order through jet pins. They work perfect in here if you just want one pin, one planner, you can buy a pin loop and you are set. It's, it's what every college and high school student needs. You have your list, you have your time slots, 
to learn about time blocking and what are you doing at different times or if you have a job on the side of college or high school and three sizes and they all fit in a backpack and in and out, in and out, and we'll hold up all year for you. So I always recommend that. Now let's go into the daily. So that is where I have landed for the weekly. And I know there's a few other planners that I tried that I didn't mention because I just tried them for like one week, but I tried Moxie Life. That's the one that just came to mind that I know I tried. Then going into my daily, I don't know why, but something made me want to come out of my plain notebook phase. And since I loved Passion Planner so much, I was enjoying the weekly so much, I was like, let me try out Passion Planner daily. I've used a couple pages in it off and on over the years, but never stayed in it for any extensive amount of time. Well, I didn't stay in it for an extensive amount of time this time either, but as you can see, I really liked the organization of it for a little while, for my days. And who knows, I might go back into here again soon. But I used it for like a good week, I think, maybe a little bit longer, and... The lines are a little bit small for me, but I do love the two page spread every day that it's undated for a daily. So you can just come in and just, you know, go into it on your day. I love how they make you put your game changer goals for the day. And that's like my top three, the today's focus, personal versus work, and then time blocking out your day. That is what actually made me gravitate towards leaving my notebooks right now. I don't always need that. I don't always do that, but I felt like I was needing that now. So using that daily time blocking for things I was going to do to really see how will I fit this in my day, that becomes the game changer, but I don't want that to take up half my page. And then I have extra list room over here. So I really did like that about the Passion Planner daily. I didn't use any of the monthly or the goal stuff up front because I was just using the daily. But then I decided to try the Sprouted daily. Now I had already used it before during all this stuff. Let's flip through some of the pages I've used. Sprouted daily really is amazing because you have a weekly page so you can put all your events for the week. If this was your only planner, it would work. It would work. I could even make it work for me, but I just love to have my weekly out to see. If I was a little bit less busy of a person, if I wasn't running my channel and I was just doing my mom stuff, household stuff, homeschooling stuff with my son, I think that I could just have this work for my planner because you have your weekly appointments, you have your weekly list, and then you have a page per day, even full pages on Saturday and Sunday. That's also what's good about an undated daily here is you have full pages on Saturday and Sunday. And as I flip through here, you'll see you get the same time blocking, not taking up half of your daily page, but enabling me to time block with a lot of room for lists still and room for a top three, which I like. And if anything needs to be like a big focus up there. So I used it for a good amount of time during this planner tryout. I even filled out like the reflection a little bit and I like her monthlies. And then you'll see some blank pages because that's when I was in Passion Planner. And so there's a couple, there's some blank weeks in here. That was the Passion Planner stint. But then I came back into here because I really missed it. I liked this better than the Passion Planner. And so I love having my big events for the week in here. Even though they're on my weekly, I still write them in here because, hey, planners, we like to rewrite things, right? And then my dailies. I love the extra room for lists. I don't have to write a really short thing. I can write almost like a full sentence. I can go all the way across. You have extra dot grid pages at the end of your month with your reflections. Really nice reflection questions. Extra lined pages. See why I said this could work as your only planner. And really good tabbed pages starting out your month. I've wrote some of the big things on for the month. And then another dot grid starting because my month is starting on this side. I love it. If you look at this page, she has her lines line up exactly with the graph grid. So you could either use this for something else or you can easily write all the way across like I do. I always go all the way across in mine in a really nice note section down here too. I just love the layout of this daily page. She changed it this year and tweaked it and I love it, you guys. And I love the date is up there bold enough that I can read it even without my reading glasses. I'm taking them off right now. I can read it even without my reading glasses, which is important to me, but it's still not taking a huge amount of the page real estate. I do feel like that could be dump, bumped down a tiny bit more and make that a tiny bit bigger because I don't utilize this space ever. It's hard to write on the bottom of the day, but that could be like a daily gratitude. 
But I'd rather kind of, I would make the date even a little bit bigger for us old folks, but it works. She's utilized her weekly space really well. Like that could be a top three or some reminder, your list, your dot grid, and every day of the week here. And then, like I said, full pages even for Saturday and Sunday. And her daily planners are sold as a set, but they are sold in two six-month books. So this one only goes through the end of June, and then you start your next six-month book, which I love because I don't love a huge, huge, thick daily book. I was gonna show, I even tried Hemlock and Oak daily for one day because their paper is amazing. I love their layout too because of the time blocking is here. I love their layout. And then just all your tasks and whatever you need here, amazing. But I just don't need this thick of a book sitting on my desk. It has to be thick because it has thick paper. And so many people are using this in, this year and loving it. But for me, I just knew right away with one day that like this book was a bit thick for me. And so I like a thinner book. I like my daily split. It feels very portable, lightweight. Even though I don't take it out of my house, I still like it to feel more lightweight. Her coil works great for me. And so I have landed on Sprouted. You can get 15% off with code Amanda's Favorites. I believe that is a one-time use code and no affiliate link for Sprouted Planners. But I am absolutely loving this daily. And I think I'm going to be in here for, I don't know, a really good amount of time. So that is where I've landed right now, you guys. I'd love to hear where you have landed right now. What planner or planners are you in right now? Share with us down in the comments because not only will I like to read them, but I know many others will love to go through there and read them and discover new planners and see what everybody is in and what you're loving right now. Take care of yourself so you can take care of others. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.